Water is what makes the difference between Earth and other planets. The Amazon has 17% of all the fresh water of the world. The Amazon contains the largest biodiversity on Earth. We have at least one third of all the tropical rainforest of the planet. If we destroy it, we are going to increase certainly the amount of global warming. If you cut down the Amazon, the whole of human population would be in trouble. Brazil is home to the Amazon, the largest rainforest in the world. Its survival is one of the most critical issues facing modern society and the future of our planet. For 20 years, Marcio Ayres has been fighting for the protection of its ecosystem and its indigenous people. Early in 2002, he had to leave the forest, having been diagnosed with cancer. Now, six months later, Marcio is on the road to recovery returning to the world he loves to continue his work. When I come in the boat and I am traveling around here, means I am back home. It's uh, one of the greatest pleasures in life to be back to this forest. This is uh, basically my life work. Amazonian Brazil boasts one of the most extraordinary and pristine ecosystems in the world, the seasonally flooded forest. For six months of the year, 40 feet of water inundate the area. This unique environment inspired Marcio's life's work. I came here first time to study the white pacari monkey. I was a student at Cambridge University, but at that time I was so enchanted by this place that um, I decided to propose this place as a nature reserve and would be the very first flooded forest reserve in Brazil. In the past, Brazilian law didn't allow people to stay in those protected areas. We had to throw out all the traditional population of the place. This was first not humanly right and it was not helping conservation at all. So we decided to work for a new method so that people could stay in those protected areas. And that's what Mamirawa is for. Tiago de Mello is a renowned poet and Amazonian. He is a passionate supporter of its indigenous people. Before Marcio Aires got to the lake of Mamirawa, where he went to study about a monkey called the Wakari, the whole of that vast forest was inhabited by an exploited population, exploited woodcutters and fishermen. They were men, women and children without any future prospects. <laughs> Because there was a lot of fish here. Everybody used to come here, and the fishermen would take 50 tons of fish in one go, in one go. They would take 50 tons of pirarucu and any other fish they could find. It would take the community two years to catch the amount of fish that they would take. When Marcio got here with this proposal, it was above their presence, so to speak. Because then, us, we would have some help in protecting the lake. Because we weren't strong enough to do it alone. The area's main source of income is fishing. Before Marcio arrived, many species were near extinction. The success of his fish management plan has been staggering. We gave the advice to the community to determine conservative fishing quotas, right, so that a large amount of adults 
individuals of Pierre Coup were left in the lakes. And the result, we can say that after three years of work, the Pierre Coup population in this region has increased 300%. Men are employed to monitor the amount and age of fish being caught. This information is used to determine fishing quotas so that adequate stocks of each species can be maintained. This has attracted a lot of the attention of the fishermen from the community itself in the sense that they see, oh, this works, so we gotta follow this. That's the best you can do. I mean, you got them involved in the work and they do this management using their own knowledge. At the moment, uh, in Mominawa, we have more or less sustainable use because the fish populations are increasing like 60% each year and people is increasing their income but between 30 and 50 percent. So both are going up and uh, it's sustainable because it's not deteriorating the resources.